Originally, light bulbs looked like bulbs, hence the name. But then in the 2000s, we started using ones that looked like a curly Q because we wanted to save energy, and this was the best technology available to do it at the time using a small spiral-shaped fluorescent tube. But eventually, these got phased out, and we went back to using light bulbs that looked like bulbs, except with a bit of plastic on them, because now they're using LEDs instead of an incandescent filament. But in our 100-year history of going from old bulb-shaped light bulbs to new bulb-shaped light bulbs, there were some other shapes and sizes. Of course, we all know these big, long fluorescent tubes, which are still commonly used in commercial installations. But there were some other shapes and sizes that were not so commonly used, including square light bulbs, diamond-shaped light bulbs, whatever you call this shape, and circular light bulbs. These are called circline bulbs, or to be more technically accurate, you should call it a lamp instead of a bulb. Circline lamps are available in 8, 12, and 16 inch sizes. These were introduced by General Electric in 1946, and their real heyday was in the 1950s when they were commonly used in kitchens. And they had some really beautiful chrome fixtures for them, often including two or even all three sizes of circline lamps in the fixture. But circline lamps are not just a relic of the past. You can actually still buy them today. I just got these recently at Home Depot. Brand new Philips circline lamps in the 8 inch size in cool white and bright white flavors. And circline lamps experienced a second surge of popularity in the late 1970s when the energy crisis caused people to think about more efficient forms of lighting. And to fill that need, they introduced these ungainly contraptions to allow you to install a circline lamp into an ordinary light bulb socket, creating the first form of compact fluorescent lights. General Electric introduced their version of the Circline lamp adapter in 1979. They called it the Circ Light. This is the 60 watt equivalent version, which consumes 22 watts of electricity. They also had a larger 100 watt equivalent, which consumed 44 watts. And other brands had their own names for the same idea, including Circo Lux, Luma Circle, and Ring of Light. The big selling point of the Cirque Light was more light using less energy. They claimed it was brighter than a 60 watt soft white bulb, but uses only 22 watts. Here they show some intended use cases of the Cirque Light and fabulous late 70s, early 80s interior decor, an ordinary table lamp, an overhead fixture in a kitchen, and a fixture suspended from the ceiling above a dining room table. And here's the rather complex process for installing a circ light in a table lamp, which I'll go through and show you. And here's what this one cost when it was purchased at Kmart in December 1984, $9.88. Now let's open up the circ light that's been in the box since 1984. The box is rather frayed at the edges, but it has never been opened. So here we go. Okay, we got some styrofoam. There's the manual. And there's the adapter. And there's the bulb itself. The little plastic piece is very yellowed, even though it has never been exposed to sunlight. And there's some pieces of tape here which Obviously, you're no longer going to be good since they've been sitting so long. Yeah, just the adhesive is all dried up, so those are no good. It also came with an ownership registration card, which implores us to please fill it in and mail it at once. It's going to the General Electric Company Circlight Registration Department in Neela Park, Cleveland, Ohio. And here's the manual for the Circlight. The lighting system designed to save energy. 
and it tells all the features and those are all the steps to install it and the manual has a date of February 1981 on it. The later adapters have plastic clips which are prone to cracking and breaking but this is one of the older ones that has metal clips so that's good. The way you install it is that the bulb clips into those hooks like that and then there's the cable that plugs into the bulb. You have to sort of clip it on like that and then plug in this adapter. That side popped out so it's a little bit of a tricky process but I got it in. You can see why these were not the most ideal solution. It's big, it's heavy, it's complex to assemble, and doesn't even fit in many lamps. It says, caution, added weight of fitting may cause instability of freestanding portable lamps. Use only with portable table lamps provided with lamp shades. Be sure to install attachment provided with fitting to existing lamp holder in accordance with instructions. And in case you're wondering about the purpose of the pieces of tape that were enclosed, they were designed to add extra strength to the bulb socket of your lamp. I will try installing the circ light in an ordinary table lamp in a moment, but first I happen to be buying some parts from a company called SMC Electronics, and on their website I found what they called a vintage table lamp base for $7.50, and despite them calling it vintage, it's actually brand new in the box from China. I won't attempt to pronounce the name of the distributor or manufacturer, but it is a brand new item. And it's a very simple lamp socket in a base with a built-in switch, but it also has a switch on the power cord, strangely. And I think this will be perfect for displaying the circ light almost like a piece of art. Just like that. I plugged it in and I'm ready to turn it on, but first, as the manual for the circ light warns, when turning portable lamp on, flickering may occur before starting. This is common with fluorescent tubes. So if you're sensitive to flickering images, you might want to look away for a couple seconds. So here we go. And it did indeed flicker quite a bit before turning on, but now it's glowing brightly and even swamping out the camera. Now I lock the exposure and I'll turn it off so you can see the difference that makes. It's almost a completely black image. Now I'll turn it back on. And I'll try the switch on the lamp itself. So that is the circ light as a display piece. And despite it having what General Electric called a warm white bulb, it actually puts out a very nice neutral white color. It's not too yellowish and not too bluish. It's just the kind of color temperature I like. And on the box, General Electric claimed that the circ light does not generate any radio interference. So for comparison, I have a more modern CFL with an electronic ballast and next to it I have an AM radio which I'll turn on tuned to a weak station. Then I'll turn on the lamp and you'll hear what happens. So that's the radio interference caused by the modern CFL with an electronic ballast. Now the vintage circ light. Turn that on. A little bit of clicking when it first sparked up to life, but now very little radio interference. There's a little bit of crackling, but not nearly as bad as that modern CFL and indeed as many modern LED bulbs. Now for a direct comparison, on the right I have an ordinary 60 watt incandescent bulb and I'll switch over to the circ light. And it is slightly brighter than the 60 watt incandescent light, just like General Electric claimed. 
and the color temperature is slightly cooler. I'd say whereas an ordinary soft white incandescent bulb is usually rated at 2700K color temperature, I'd say this is more like 3000K. However, the color rendering is definitely better with the incandescent bulb. The colors really pop on this rainbow effect and the red logo on this box. And when I switch over to the circ light, the colors are quite a bit more muted. So that was one of the downsides of these fluorescent bulbs. The color rendering was not as good as an ordinary incandescent bulb. But in terms of brightness and energy efficiency, it definitely is better than the incandescent bulb. And checking it with my kilowatt meter, it indeed draws 22 watts as advertised. Now for another downside of the circ light, and that is the difficulty in installing it in an ordinary table lamp like this one. Because whereas it's not too difficult to reach in and install an ordinary incandescent bulb without needing to remove the lampshade, in order to install the circ light you definitely do need to remove the lampshade. And then, of course, take out your ordinary light bulb. Then you have to remove the harp. That's what this thing is called. And there's usually these little retaining rings you have to pull up. And then you squeeze in, and that comes off. Now you can install the circ light. And then reinstall the harp over it and put those retaining clips back in. Now you need a lampshade big enough to fit the circ light which some of the smaller ones are not. But this one is so the circ light will fit and now finally I can turn it on. So the circ light fits fine in most table lamps and floor lamps, but when it comes to desk lamps where the bulb is horizontal, obviously that's not going to work. Nor is it going to work in small bedroom lamps where the lampshade clips directly onto the bulb. These adapters to install a fluorescent circ light lamp into an ordinary light bulb socket never really caught on for ordinary household use, but obviously there must have been some kind of market for them because I was surprised to discover that General Electric actually renewed the trademark for Cirque Light in 2004 and didn't cancel it until 2020. So although you cannot buy these Cirque Light adapters anymore, they were on the market for quite a while longer than I expected. And you can still buy the bulbs for them. So if you have one of these, you can keep on using it.